So here we're going to talk about this concept of what is known as the common ion effect. Let's start with a simple reaction that we've already done numerous types of calculations like this. So I want to calculate the pH of a 0.15 molar ammonium ammonia solution. And I know this is weak base, and I know its Kb value is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. And so it's a relatively straightforward calculation, which we've done, as we said, we've done many times before. So I have 0.15 molar ammonia. I'm going to start with 0, and effectively 0, and equilibrium shifts to the right. Next thing we do is we set up our K sub B expression. So 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 is the ammonium ion times the hydroxide ion divided by ammonia. Plug in our equilibrium values, x squared, 0.15 minus x. A small miracle happens, we go through, we actually calculate it. We get the value of x is 1.6 times 10 to the minus third, which is equal to our hydroxide ion concentration. It means our pOH is 2.78, and we get a pH of 11.2. Now, here's the wrench. What happens if into this solution we had some ammonium chloride already in there? Well, ammonium chloride is a soluble salt dissociates into ammonium ion and chloride ion. The chloride ion, we know, won't do anything. Chloride ion is, you know, nowhere in the equilibrium, and chloride ion we know is a non-existent base, because it's conjugated as hydrochloric acid. But that ammonium ion will, in fact, affect things, because the ammonium ion is right there in that equilibrium. So Le Chatelier says if we have some of this in, if we add some of this to our equilibria, this equilibrium will shift to the left. So it shifts to the left, that means our hydroxide ion concentration will drop. If our hydroxide ion concentration drops, our pOH would then increase, because the minus the base 10 log, and so our pH would go down, right? It would be less basic, right? So this equilibrium shifts, it would be less basic. And we can actually calculate what it is. So what so this is the same concentration, 0.15 molar ammonia, and but this time we we're going to put it in a solution that's 0 0.035 in ammonium chloride. And again, that dissociates into ammonium ion chloride ion, and the chloride ion we don't care about. So the only thing that's different in this calculation is that we have a small amount of ammonium ion in there before. So now we just do our same, work our same magic in terms of setting up our eye line, it shifts to the right, but now it's not going to shift as much. Plug it into our KB expression, now our, our math is a little bit different. Small miracle happens, and we determine that x now in this equilibrium is 7.7 .7 times 10 to the minus 5, which is equal to our hydroxide ion concentration, giving us a pOH of 4.11 and a pH of 9.89, so a little bit less than what we had said before, so it's a little less basic, because the equilibrium just didn't shift as much. Now there's a term for this sort of concept, and it's called the common ion effect. A shift of an equilibrium is reduced, induced, by an ion common to the equilibrium. So we can change how far the equilibrium shifts because we've already got some stuff in there on the right hand side. So the easiest way to sort of think about it is in terms of the brute force math of, oh, well, you know, if I already have some of this, to get to equilibrium, it's not going to have to shift so much since I've already have that initial amount as compared to the previous one where I started out with zero and zero. Now I have a certain amount. So this equilibrium, that initial, it will not shift as far to the right. We can do it mathematically, hardcore mathematically, or we can just sort of like think about it. But that's the common line effect. Good luck.